Hello, this video tutorial will review interpreting and navigating the Climate Studio Results Panel after running a simple shoebox thermal analysis simulation. In the previous video tutorial, I showed you how to set up your simulation inputs. Now I'll press run and after letting Energy Plus run in the DOS window, the CS Results Panel will automatically open. Initially, we can see a metric dashboard that shows a summary of results for the whole building. In this case, that is only one thermal zone. This dashboard includes the site energy use or energy use intensity, EUI, operational carbon, energy costs and savings, and baseline EUI. Clicking on the normalized or total button will switch the dashboard between normalized and whole building modes. The remainder of the results are organized at the whole building and zone level. Under buildings, you can access nine different graphs. Energy use intensity, which shows monthly EUI levels for the whole building for heating, cooling, fans, pumps, lighting, hot water, humidification, heat rejection, and equipment. Energy use, which shows the total monthly energy use for the whole building for heating, cooling, fans, pumps, lighting, hot water, humidification, heat rejection, and equipment. Zone temperature curves, which show the number of hours for each zone in which the operative temperature is below in red or above in blue a given temperature. Energy flows, which indicates the monthly sum of heat flows in and out of a zone. Internal loads such as equipment, people, and electric lighting always provide positive heat gains. System heat transfers may be positive, as in heating, or negative, as in cooling. Fuel use, which indicates the monthly consumption of each fuel type. This depends on the primary energy set in the Energy Sources and Emissions Factor panel. CO2 emissions by fuel, which shows the monthly carbon dioxide emissions for each fuel type, also affected by the CO2 set in the Energy Sources and Emissions Factors panel. Load duration. This graphs the number of hours the system's loads are at a certain level in descending order. This is a good way to see if there are outlier hours that have much higher loads than the rest of the year and can be investigated for what is causing the peak load condition. Since the size of the system components depends on the greatest load it needs to handle, lowering the outlier maximum load will allow the building to be equipped with a smaller system component and save costs. Peak heating week shows the week around the hour with the maximum heating load. This is another good way to understand the performance of your model during the week with the most heating demand. Peak cooling week, likewise, shows the week around the hour with the minimum cooling load. There are three buttons in the Building Results panel. The first lets you change between IP and SI units. The second lets you download the data for each plot in CSV format. Lastly, clicking on the printer icon will open the Export Plot panel. Here you can adjust the export format between PNG and PDF, update the plot width and height, as well as adjust the font size and line weight by scaling factor. Let's minimize the Building panel and review the Zones panel. At the zone level, Climate Studio reports hourly exterior dry bulb, mean radiant, air, and operative temperatures, as well as exterior relative humidity and indoor relative humidity. Energy flows are also graphed for each zone. By clicking on a zone from the zone table, the graph above updates to show said zone data. The filter results area can be used to narrow down the table by name, which is useful for especially large models. Let's head back to the Climate Studio workflows panel and make some adjustments to the model's windows. This way, we'll have two results files to use in the Powerful Results Comparison tool. I'll quickly edit my zone and change the window to wall ratio to 0.25. I'll then run the simulation once more. In the results files table, I'll make sure that both of my results files are named appropriately. Then, I'll select both results and launch the Results Comparison tool by clicking on this bar graph icon. The Results Comparison tool is a graphical interface for comparing multiple thermal analysis results. It features a stacked bar graph that can be used to track the energy performance of a set of design variants vis-a-vis -vis baselines and targets. The browser includes buttons for adding, removing, or reordering files in the list. Reordering is also possible by dragging and dropping items within the bar graph. You may also save the current comparison or reopen a previously saved comparison file. Various metrics can be plotted in the bar graph, which are set using a graph settings panel. 
Available options include energy use intensity, carbon, cost, and energy flows, which include all heat gains and losses. Metrics may be displayed using absolute or area normalized values. Below the bar graph is a table that presents the output values in the graph, followed by a comprehensive list of the model input parameters. The input parameters provide a numerical record of changes made from one design option to the next. To highlight these distinctions, small triangles are drawn in each cell to indicate increases or decreases vis-a-vis -vis the baseline option. Both the graph and the table can be exported in PNG or PDF format. The table can also be copied as a CSV file. Now, let's close the results comparison window. In the top right corner above the metric dashboard, we have an American Institute of Architects icon used for automated submission to the AIA 2030 Design Data Exchange. You'll be prompted to enter your firm and user key along with project information. Then you'll be able to submit your project from directly within Rhino. Thank you for watching and happy simulations.